Amen. Proverbs. Proverbs 4. 4 and 23. 4 and 23. Let's read in Eunice. Keep thine heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Let's say it again. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. On yesterday, last evening, we spoke about being spirit-filled and, and crucifying the flesh. And getting the flesh out of the way so the spirit and the Holy Spirit can, can really have this true way with you. We were talking last night about how, you know, it's a difference between being a church member and a spirit-filled believer. The behavior makes a difference in the two. The spirit-filled believer behaves one way and the church member makes it behave a totally different way. And I want to just kind of continue in that same flow today. And being spirit filled, but the truth of the matter is yes. the condition of your heart. Yes. The condition of your heart affects almost every area of your life. Yes. The condition of your heart. In the natural, the heart is one of the strongest muscles in the body, it has to pump blood throughout. The entire body. Wow. Your word will I hide in my heart. That I may not sin against you. If the heart is strong enough. To pump blood. Throughout the entire body. Regardless to the size of it. No matter how wide or how tall. How much more powerful is the word of God. If I truly plant it in my heart. Ooh. Ooh, if I put, truly put the word of God in my heart, that means I live by it every day. I, I seek to please God according to the scriptures each and every day. But the truth of the matter is, the reason why we find ourselves in, in positions and, and constantly sur surrounded in, 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 in just the depression and heaviness is because of the condition of our heart. Here it says, keep thine heart with all diligence. Above all, guard your heart. Guard it. Because out of it are the issues of life. Yeah. Meaning whatever's happening in your life, people will be able to know it if your heart is contaminated by it. Yeah. If your heart becomes contaminated by the cares of your life, if you become bitter because of someone what someone's done to you. It will come out in your heart. It will come out in your behavior. It will come out in your actions. Why? When the heart is corrupt, the life and conduct will be corrupt. When the heart is clean, the life will be clean and the fruit good. And the fruit good. See, because the truth of the matter is that we are chosen by God to bear fruit. You didn't choose me, but I chose you to produce fruit, that your fruit should remain. So we have to really look at the condition of our heart. But what happens is, offense comes before Christ comes into your heart. Offense comes first, and then when offense comes, you put the guard on your heart. Because offense comes first. Or you receive Jesus Christ and the offense becomes greater than his power to heal you and deliver you and cause you to forgive from him. But the heart and the condition of our heart affects how we treat people, how we handle life situations, how we respond to certain situations in our life when we predicate upon the condition of our heart. If we're still in our flesh and, and our heart is still a heart of stone, we can respond with no feeling at all. Just nonchalant. No compassion. Just, just straight, no chase. But if Christ comes into your heart, we 
respond to matters different. I want to look at something. I want to look at something that Jesus says over in Mark chapter 7. And I'm going to read it from the New Living Translation. And he, he, he says that Jesus went into the house to get away from the crowd. And his disciples asked what he meant by a parable he had just used. He said, don't you understand? He asked, can't you see that the food you put in your body cannot devour? Right. Food doesn't go into your heart, but only passes through the stomach, then into the soul. By saying this, he declared that every kind of food is acceptable in God's eyesight. Then he added, it is what comes from inside that defiles you. For from, for from within, out of the person's heart, comes evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, wickedness, deceitfulness, lustful desires, envy, slander, pride, and foolishness. All these things, all these vile things come from within and they are that what they found you because it's in your heart it's in your heart the question I have today is what's in your heart what's in your heart that you are holding on to because I want to encourage you and let you know in case you didn't realize it that healing is available so we want to confine healing to a physical healing me. I'm being healed from a sickness or a disease. But God can heal your emotional scars. Your emotional bruises. Your spiritual hurts. Your church hurts. God wants to heal you inside out. And there are things that will happen in life. Because life happens. And there are things that will happen in your life. That will create, he will go, a dramatic experience. It's something that no one did to you. No, they no one said anything to you. No one mistreated you. It's just simply a deeply distressing or disturbing experience. Emotional shock following a stressful event. Something can happen in your life that can be so traumatic that it alters who you are. And nobody has done anything to you. But the experience that happened in your life, you had a dope experience. See, like everything around you began to happen at the same time. You had such a traumatic experience that it completely altered who you were. But because you didn't see it as that, you saw it as your coping mechanism. How I dealt with it. And you deal with by putting up these walls and, and these blockers so that nothing can get out. And nothing can get out. No one's hurt you. No one's mistreated you. You are just upset and borderline mad at God for what happened to you. Traumatic experience can completely alter who you are. Because you'll protect yourself. Yes. You become first preservation of life is self-preservation. Yes. You begin to protect yourself. You begin to guard yourself. You begin to put up firewalls. And healing is available. God can heal you from every emotional hurt, every spiritual hurt, and church hurt is sometimes the hardest to get over. But he can heal that too. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Guard your heart with all diligence. You remember this one last night? You remember this one last night, right? We, we, we had water. We had that sugar, which was the word. And we started it up. You, you on fire for God. You're on fire for God. And then something happens. And then it's completely out of how you look. It's out of how you look. You don't understand what's going on. And, and then something else happens. A lot of change happens in your life. And because you've been hurt two times, 
What you do now is now you guard your heart. Now you guard your heart. You weren't protecting yourself. See, your, your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost rests inside of you. So in understanding that truth, these entry gates to my temple, I have to guard with diligence because this is the gateway to my heart. Oh, help us, Holy Ghost. Because these are the gateway to my heart. I have to guard this first to keep this protected. Help us, Holy Ghost. You can't listen to every piece of gossip you get. Sometimes coming to peace, peace, peace. Just shut up talking to me. So I know Mama said that for life, but sometimes you gotta get ugly with the devil. Because he ain't nice with you. He, he's not. He's not playing any games with your life. He's coming home, bringing his best. And you entertain him. Because it's a good sound to get in your ear. But if these are the entry gates, and there are more. To my temple, uh -huh. to my heart, I'm sorry, to my heart, I have to guard these first. Oh, that's right. I, I, I have to guard these first. Yes. Because if I get hurt, because I let something come in, mm -hmm. it's going to affect this. Yeah. And how about you? Right. So something happens, and now you want to go into this mode. Nothing comes in, nothing's going out. It's nothing changing in your life. You're still going through the motions. You're still going, you still hurt, you still broken, you still feel abused, you still feel lost, you still feel alone, you still feel isolated. And the greatest trick of the enemy is to pull you into isolation. It is. One of his greatest tricks is to pull you from a monster belief. Yeah, yeah. Because if I can get you from within the choir, at your weakest moment, I can pop something. I can break you down. I can make you look at me and give me praise. And now you, I will begin to convince you that I'm right. That's the devil's heart. Because you have shut everything off. You may even stop going to church. Come on now. Or you're just going through it for formalities, but ain't nothing coming in. Because the usher didn't speak to you on Sunday morning. Or they told you that you weren't singing your song this Sunday. So you done just shut everything out there. And nothing's going in and nothing comes out. But I want to encourage you if, you if you just don't get to a place where you can still allow something to come in. If you, if, if, even in your most hurt place, yes. God is still able yes. to heal. Yes. He's still able to heal. Yes. He's still able to heal. Yes. And what was once all looking crazy, <laughs> the more you say under the word, the more you say under the word, the more you say under the word, and then on this one, so fall in you and get you stirred. <laughs> you see? Wow. He wants to clean you up just like that. God wants to clean you up just like that. Are you still stirred? Take the lid off. Take the lid off. Yeah, yeah. Take the lid off. Yeah, they hurt you. Yeah, they mistreated you. Yeah, they lied on you. But God still wants to heal you. He still wants to touch you. He still wants to make you new. Some of you are still walking around being 
bitter from broken relationships. Because he hurts you. He lied on you. Yeah, he did. But God still wants to heal. You still mad because of what happened 10 years ago when the person that did it is dead and gone. You don't even remember what they have done, but you still want God wants to heal you. He wants to cleanse you and make you like new. It's only the blood of Jesus can make you a way to stop. I don't care how short and messed up you are. It's only the blood of Jesus. Only the blood. Only the blood of Jesus that can make you a way to stop. As short as your life is. As hurt as it has been. As broken as it was then, God wants to mend the pieces and, and, and cl unclog the arteries and, and, and get the circulation back going and open your line to heaven back up so it can clear flow from heaven to earth through you. God's your heart. Don't wait until you get hurt to begin God. can't do that. These right here. You have to guard every entry point to the temple. You have to guard every entry point to the temple. Not only not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. He wants to be inside of you. He, he desires to rest in you. But there's some things you got to get up out of. Some things you got to let go of. It's something that I can to wipe your hands of and say, I won't go back to it. I won't continue to entertain it. I don't care how many times you've been, you've been bruised and how many times they've hurt you. God still can clean you up. He still desires to to have relationship with you. And the beauty of him is that no matter how messed up you think life is, listen to this, listen to this verse, and I love you, you can say all the time, he came that you may have a lot and have it more abundant. It's his desire that you have an abundant life, that you have life in an overflow, that you have more than enough. This is his desire. So no matter what it looks like right now, you got to continue to confess what God's desire is for you. His promises are yes and amen. There's no in between that. There's no middle ground. If he said it, will he not do it? He's an awesome God. He's an old time God. He's a forgiving God. He's a healing God. And he can heal more than your physical body. He can heal more than your physical body. And he desires to. He desires to. To be the new living test, the new simple church that he desires us to be. And this time, we cannot walk with our feet on our shoulders. We can't. We can't afford to walk with our feet on our shoulder. Why? Because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Principalities. There's a war going on. And if you know the whole story, you already won. You're just going through the motions to get your trophy. But you can't tap out. Can't tap out in the race. The race is not given to the swift or the strong, but to the one that endured to the end. Will you stay to the end? Will you stay to the end? I know what it looks like right now, but will you stay to the end? Can you hang in there to the end? He's available. He's available. He's 
available. The healer is available. And it's just a matter of asking. A matter of asking. Experiences in life can alter your whole behavior. Right, here we go. Familiar spirits. Because you heard it, cliche. Misery loves company. Be not deceived. Bad company corrupts good character. Be not deceived. Bad company corrupts good character. It's in the book. It's in the book. Is to forgive. But if you think about it all the times, the Lord had to forgive you. Oh, yeah. 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 All the times he had to forgive you. And he's here today. Not just today, but every day. Because when you leave here, you go home. The enemy of the time comes trying to rob the word from you. Yeah. You get tested on a bad word you just heard. But put the devil under your feet. Resist the devil and he shall flee. Yeah. Yeah. Resist him and he shall flee. Yeah. You can't resist what you continually entertain.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just because it didn't hurt anymore doesn't mean that healing was done right. All right now, come on. It's because it doesn't seem like a human thing. That a man that hurt is is his heel right. He wants your heart. He wants your heart. The Lord desires your heart. If you give him your heart, your life comes with it. All right now, come on. The heart will sustain life. In the natural, the heart is what sustains life. If the heart stops working, nothing else will operate. That's why it's so important that once it stops, they immediately begin chest compressions to keep the blood flowing. The heart is so important. The condition of your heart affects how you treat people, how you serve people, and listen, even how you serve God. Amen. It will. Amen. You don't believe me? Get hurt by somebody in church. You will stop going to church because that reminds you of the last hurt. All right now, come on. But say not the assembly. Save me. Save me. Save me. Save me. Save me. Help us, Holy Ghost. Help us, Holy Ghost. If you give him your heart, your life comes with it. And in giving him your life, you're laying it all at the altar. And say, Lord, I can't do it. For some people, it's nothing that no one's done to you. It's just a traumatic experience. A traumatic experience has altered your life. And God wants to heal. God wants to heal and give you new life. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Because one thing is for certain. We've all experienced hurt at one point in our life. And Jesus is the ultimate healer. He is the ultimate healer. He is the ultimate healer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Guard your heart. That requires you to guard every inch of your tomb. Yes, Lord. That doesn't mean we become numb to feelings and, and numb to things that are happening. It doesn't mean that. It does not mean that not one bit. Because you're still in the flesh. But listen to what we said last night. There are two contrary beings. Oh, yeah. And you have to choose to live in the spirit. You have to choose to live in the spirit. You have to choose to deny the flesh of what it desires. And seek God. Seek his face. Seek his presence. Seek his word. It's his word that will change. It's his word. That will renew. It's his word that will breathe new life. It's his word. If only me. Thank you, Lord. If you're able to stand, I want you to stand. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Where you are right now, every head bowed, every eye closed. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. If you are in need of God's divine healing today, thank you, Lord. Why are we going to lift your hands? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Because he wants to heal. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, do your work today, Lord. Now, we come.
come now, God, with hands lifted and heads bowed, Lord God. No need to be a healer, Lord God. No need to be a deliverer, Lord God. God, pour out your spirit now, Lord God. Heal the broken heart. Heal the hurt, Lord God. God, remove the stain, Lord God. Cleanse us, Lord God. Cleanse us, Lord God. Let your Holy Spirit fall fresh even now, Lord God. And you touch right now, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. God, that you forgive us, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Hallelujah, God. God, some are hurt, God, from broken relationships, Lord God. Some need healing, God, for what has happened to them in the past, Lord God. And God, some is need healing, God, from traumatic experiences, Lord God. But God, you are able, God, to be after me in our life, Lord God. We declare now, Lord God. We receive your healing today, God. We receive your healing today, God. In the name of Jesus. We receive your healing today, God. In the name of Jesus. 